All right, today we're going to pick up where we left off with point slope form. Just another form of a line. A point slope form is a line with slope m that goes through the point x1, y1. And it's the graph of the equation y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So my y and my x stay, they're the variables. And y1 and x1 are the points, or are the coordinates that go in for the point. Sketch the graph and find the equation of the line that passes through the point 1, negative 6 with a slope of 2. Write the equation in slope intercept form. So in order to do this, when I'm given a point and a slope, I have to write it in point slope form in order to get it to slope intercept form. So I have to start with point slope form. So I'm going to do y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So that's going to give me y minus a negative 6 equals my slope, which is 2, times x minus 1. Distribute my 2. That gives me 2x minus 2. Negative minus a negative 6 becomes a positive 6. And now to put it back in slope-intercept form, I have to get the y by itself. So I subtract the 6 over, and I'm left with y equals 2x minus 8. And that's my final answer. So you've done point slope before. You've done uh, slope intercept before. You've also dealt with vertical and horizontal lines. When a line has a slope of zero, it's called horizontal because the rise means it doesn't go up at all. You'll know that it's a horizontal line because there's no x in our equation. This is just graph and describe the line y equals 3. And so if we were doing that on a coordinate plane, where that's my x-axis. Call that 1, 2, and 3. I would just have a horizontal line at the point y equals 3. So it crosses the y-axis when it's 3. And that's it. Horizontal doesn't go up at all. You can also think of this as y equals 0x plus 3. It's got the slope of 0. 0 times anything is 0. Then I'm just combining like terms. 0 plus 3 is 3. Vertical lines is when a line has an undefined slope. So if it has an undefined slope, it's a vertical line. What does that mean to say it has an undefined slope? Well, it means that if I'm looking at this vertical line and I'm trying to measure its rise, well, it's going up so fast we can't even uh, tell what how fast it's going up. But my run is zero, so it's going right and left by zero, which means if I was trying to find the slope, I would need to find some top number and divide it by zero. And it doesn't even matter what the top number would be because you can never divide by zero. So this has an undefined slope. What would we call the equation of this line? When it was a horizontal line, it was y equals 3, because it went through 3 and came across. In this case, we have it going through x equals 2. And so our line is going to be x equals 2. Vertical lines, you should have an x instead of a y. If it's a horizontal line, it's just going to be y equals something. Parallel and perpendicular lines. Two non-vertical lines are parallel when they have exactly the same slope. Two non-vertical lines are perpendicular when the product of their slopes is negative 1. 
So they're parallel if they have the same exact slope. And they're perpendicular if we can take their uh, slopes and multiply them together and get negative 1. We also call the slopes of perpendicular lines reciprocals of each other. They're negative reciprocals of each other. Which means that if the original was, say, if one line was, say, two-thirds, in order for another line to be perpendicular to it, we would take a negative and flip the original fraction. This is a negative perpendicular or negative reciprocal of this number. Additionally, if we multiplied them together, the twos would cancel and the threes would cancel, leaving me with a negative one on top and a one on the bottom, which is negative one over one. So we would end up with a slope, or uh, when we multiply their slopes, we would end up with negative one as our answer. That tells us that it's perpendicular. Given the line M, whose equation is 3x plus 2y minus 6 equals 0, find the equation of the lines through the point 2, negative 1 that's parallel to M, and then for the second part, perpendicular to M. Okay, whenever we have a question like this, the first thing we need to do is put it in slope-intercept form. So I need to take this equation and put it in slope-intercept form. Simplify that, what does that mean? It means we have to get the y by itself. So I have 3x plus 2y minus 6 equals 0. Add the 6 over and subtract the 3x over. It gives me 2y equals negative 3x plus 6. y still not by itself, divide by 2. That's going to give me y equals negative 3 halves x plus 3. That's my equation of m. Now I need to make a line that's parallel to m. So starting with that, it means that I have to have the same slope as this line. Everything else changes, though. So I have to go into point-slope form now. y minus the y-coordinate of my point, negative 1, equals the slope, negative 3 over 2, times x minus x1, which is 2. On this side, I distribute. On this side, I get rid of my negatives, because it's minus a negative. So it's going to be y plus 1 equals negative 3 halves x plus 3. Subtract the 1 over. Gives me y equals negative 3 halves x plus 2. And that's our final answer there. For perpendicular, we don't want to have the same slope. We have to have the negative reciprocal. So our new slope is going to be flip that. It becomes a positive two-thirds. And now I just plug my point back in. y minus negative 1 equals two-thirds times x minus 2. This is going to become a plus 1 again. This is 2 thirds x minus 4 thirds. Subtract the 1 over. y equals 2 thirds x. And if I have negative 4 thirds and I'm trying to subtract 1, I have to get a common denominator. So it becomes 3 thirds. 3 divided by 3 is 1. That's why we can do that. So that's negative 4 minus 3, which is negative 7 over 3. And that's my final answer. 2 thirds x minus 7 thirds.
If I want to graph these lines, I can. Let's go back to the original. We had y equals negative 3 halves x plus 3. Desmos will actually allow us to graph it using just the uh, original function if we wanted to. So if I wanted to type that in, 3x plus 2y minus 6, maybe not. Huh. 3x, oh, I have to set it equal to 0. Equal 0, that's right. That's my original line. Now let's check my parallel equation. y equals negative 3 halves x plus 2. If I look at this graph, they're running side by side. Let's put in our equation for the perpendicular one. y equals 2 thirds x minus 7 thirds. And if I look here, that forms a right angle with both of those, which tells me that it is, in fact, perpendicular. <clears throat> I can zoom out all I want. These two are not going to run together. It may appear like it if I zoom out too far, but that's just because, like, it's like looking at the Earth from a spaceship. Like, you don't see any houses. You just see it all merge together. But, in fact, these two lines do not ever touch each other. They just keep going on forever and ever, side by side which is what parallel is. Last thing we have here is the standard form of a line. The standard form of a line is AX plus BY equals C. A, B, and C are integers, which means they're all whole numbers. A has to be greater than or equal to zero, and A and B are not both zero. The benefit for standard form is that every line could be written in standard form if we wanted to. So even if I have a line, say, if I started with uh, a line in slope-intercept form that says y equals negative two-thirds x minus four-sevenths. Standard form says everything has to be whole numbers, which means that I would just multiply this entire thing by my denominators. So I can multiply this by 21. <clears throat> it's going to give me 21y equals negative 2 times 21 is negative 42 divided by 3 gives me negative 14 x and then this one is it, it would really just be 4 times 3 same thing here whenever I multiply negative 2 thirds times 21 I did 21 divided by 3 that's 7 times negative 2 gives you negative 14 same thing over here I can divide the 21 by 7 first to give me a smaller number, which is 3, times negative 4 is negative 12. It has to be in the form <clears throat> ax plus by equals c. So I need to get this x over to the other side. So it's 14x plus 21y equals negative 12. Our only stipulation is this has to be a positive number. What if our original had been 2 thirds x and that left me with 14 x over here? Then to get it to the other side, I would have subtracted it 
and it would have been negative 14x. Well, then I can multiply the entire thing by negative 1. And that would have given me 14x minus 21y equals 12. So there's always a way to get that a to be a whole number and to be positive. All right, that's it for me. I'm going to give you a lesson or uh, an assignment on this lesson, and we'll probably have another one on it before we do another video. Uh, I'll be posting some homework reviews, so be on the lookout for those as well. And I'll be going over your quizzes. So grades should be updated quickly here.